Hey guys, welcome back once again. In today's session, we're going to discuss about MSAT Achieve Math Test Algebra Chapter Number 4 that is Absolute Values and Inequalities. So let's get started. Chapter Number 4, Absolute Values and Inequalities. Inequalities are mainly used for the comparison x is greater than 2, x is less than or equal to 2 and so on. So here I have covered four to five most commonly appeared question in MSAT exam based on this topic. The question number one here is if phi by m is less than or equal to two by three where m is greater than zero, what is the least possible value of m? So they are asking us what would be the minimum value m can have to make this condition to be true. So how do we do that? So just take it up as it is phi by m less than or equal to 2 by 3 while solving whether in between inequality is there or equal sign is there less than greater than doesn't matter you're gonna solve in the normal way so how do we solve it if i have one term equal to another to solve for the variable we do the cross multiplication so we're gonna do the cross multiplication here so that it becomes 5 times 3 less than or equal to 2 times m so I'm not going to change inequalities, keep it as it is, just work on number. 5 times 3 is going to be 15, less than or equal to 2m. And we are asked to solve for m, so divide both the side by 2 because we want to make a m to be alone. So that gives us 15 divided by 2 is 7.5, which is less than or equal to m. So the minimum value of m can have it as 7.5. It can also have a greater, okay? Because when I'm saying m is greater than or equal to 7.5, then it could be 7.5 and above. Above, it will go to the positive infinity. But question asking us, what is the least possible value for m? So for least possible value for m here is going to be 7.5 and which is option C. If they would have said, what is the possible value for m? 7.5 is also correct, 8 is also correct and so on. But they said least possible value. C is the right choice here. Example 2 here is for what value of n is absolute value of n minus 1 plus 1 equal to 0. They are trying to ask us for what value of n this entire result turns to 0. So let me tell you the minimum value for the absolute is 0. It never be lesser than that. First of all, what does the absolute say? Absolute says like how far a number from zero on a number line. For example, if I represent some number on a number line, let's take this is zero, one, two, three, and this side is going to be minus one, minus two, minus three. If I tell you to measure the distance from zero up to three, what are you going to say? Zero to three, it's going to be three units. And from 0 to negative 3 is also going to be 3 units. So we never say the distance is in negative. So we write it mathematically as absolute value of negative 3 is equal to 3. Absolute value of positive 3 is also equal to 3. So whatever we are writing a number under those two lines, it's basically the position of a number on the number line. And the result of it is the distance from 0. So irrespective whether the under those absolute values the numbers are positive or negative so its result is always gonna be positive so in general what i can say now absolute value of plus or minus three result is gonna be three so keep it in mind the minimum value what an absolute can have whether the value is plus or minus minimum value for it let's say plus or minus x is should be greater than or equal to zero so minimum value it can have it as zero it never turns to negative so let's apply the same case here rather than selecting any values for n try to choose from the option given if you substitute the value of n as one will this entire result turns to be zero as i told minimum value for this entire thing is gonna be zero even though i considered the value of it as a minimum irrespective of the other if this value turns to be 0, 0 plus 1 never be equal to 0, right? So that is how I can say there is no such value for it. So I should go with option D here. In case, let's take if you're not understanding or not you're getting, then what else should I do? I have to substitute the value of n as 0, n as 1, n as 2 and check it. Is there entire result turning to 0? So when you put a value of n as 0, what happens? 
So your result becomes zero minus one under the absolute, it is basically plus one equal to what I can say zero minus one is gonna be absolute value of minus one plus one. And I said anything present under the two line, the result is gonna be positive. Absolute value of minus one is one plus one, I'm getting the answer as two. So which is not equal to zero, I say which is wrong. Same way, when you put a value of n as one, so absolute value of one minus one plus one. So absolute value of one minus one is gonna be absolute value of zero plus one. So zero plus one result is one. And again, it is not equal to zero for n is equals to one. So cancel it up. Same way, when you do it as two minus one plus one, which is equal to two minus one is absolute value of one plus one, which is equal to one plus one, two. It can't be again zero, so that's wrong. So I choose only one option from A, B, C, D. So there is no such value for N. So if you have a clear idea about, no need of doing all this because as I told, the minimum value, this can have it as zero. Zero plus one never be equal to zero, right? So I should go directly. There is no such value for it. Question number three is a word problem based on inequalities. It says on January 1, 2000, there were 175,000 tons of trash in a landfill that had a capacity of 325,000 tons. The capacity of a landfill is this. And by January 1st, this was already filled. Now they say each year since then, the amount of trash in the landfill increased by 7,500 tons. If Y represents the time in year after January 1, uh, 2000, which of the following inequality describes the set of years where the landfill is at or above the capacity at or above the capacity so what we are trying to ask whatever the trash is there initially by january 1st and that if for in that if you add 7500 yearly and if y represent the number of years since then what will be the Equation represent that the trash in that landfill is meet or above the capacity. So greater than or equal to the this value. So how do we do that? As we already know that before Gen 1, 2000, the initially it has this much amount. 175,000 was already there. Plus every year this much amount of trash has been added to that landfill and we are we added this for y number of years maybe five years 10 years 20 years so per year if you are adding this much then what should you do so to get it as a total that value should be multiplied by the year how number of years so basically we added it for y number of years so what is the total trash added for these many years 7500 times the y and this should be at or above the capacity. It at means equal to or greater than the its capacity. That is 325,000. So this is what they are asking you to do. That's all word expression we are writing in terms of equation. And which equation matches our representing that will be the answer choice. So here I think option D. Yes. So D is the right answer to this question. Question number four, evaluate the expression. So, you know, they have given us something, a number, so variable, something mixed up, absolute and so on. They are asking us, evaluate the expression this when x equals to 10. So what should I do? I have to put a value of x equal to 10 carefully and I also have to follow the rule of absolute, what it is. Let me first substitute that x as 10. What it is going to be? 99 minus of minus what it is 10 i'm just substituting minus absolute value of negative 23 so what will be the result entirely that's what they're trying to say see 99 minus of minus is gonna be minus multiplied by minus you know minus of minus is gonna be plus 10 this minus sign is already there and i know that absolute value of this is going to be positive 23. So please don't do this minus times minus is again plus 23. Why? Because it is not just a number. 
we are talking that minus 23 under the absolute and something under the absolute irrespective its result is always positive you have to take that entire result of absolute of minus 23 as 23 and this sign is already there in front i just took it as it is now what will be that then put it in the calculator 99 plus 10 it's gonna be 109 109 minus 23 that gives us 86 so answer to this question is option b question number five here is the solution of inequality 3 minus 2x greater than or equal to minus 1 is they are asking us which of the following is the solution for this inequality which has been represented so how do we do that so we know that whenever we solve inequalities we solve it just treating that inequality sign as the equal so like arranging the like terms adding subtracting dividing the same thing so first i need to solve what is the range of possible values for x so how do we do that let me take it as it is 3 minus 2x greater than or equal to minus 1 to solve for x try to make x alone in that case we have to take this 3 to the other side and whenever we take a number from one side to another the sign should be changed so positive num positive turns to negative negative turns to positive then this equation becomes minus 2x greater than or equal to minus 1 which is already there this 3 goes other side becomes minus 3 so we get it as minus 2x greater than or equal to minus 4 we are asked to solve for x so we should divide it by negative 2 on the both the side so divide by negative 2 negative 2 so what it gives us negative 2 divided by negative 2 so negative by negative is going to be positive x and as we are dividing by the negative number the sign of the inequality should be flipped should be reversed that is the rule in inequality the most important thing what you need to know about the inequality is multiply or divide by negative number the sign of the inequality must be flipped so that's what i'm doing so x is greater than or equal to turns to x is less than or equal to negative 4 divided by negative 2 result is gonna be 2 this is how you represent the value of x should be less than or equal to 2 so when i am saying less than or equal to 2 i understood that but which option should i choose here they have given me something in different way so this is the way of representing the inequality and what option has given to us it is in terms of interval notation from where to where okay so whenever we are converting inequalities to interval please remember this whenever we have an open bracket so we we say it as an open bracket these open brackets are used for the kind of inequality which i can say less than or greater than so open bracket says the value of x is not a part of it so whenever we have this kind of brackets we use the inequality as this and whenever we have uh, this kind of brackets that is the square brackets these brackets we use for the inequalities less than or equal to or greater than or equal to okay so that is what i need to know this is how we translate from inequalities to the interval notation so here x is less than or equal to and when i am saying s in the interval notation minimum is negative infinity and when i am saying x is greater than or equal to that greater value will be positive infinity so when i am saying x is less than or equal to in this case so we should say that uh, x is less than or equal to 2 it meaning i can represent the interval notation for x is from negative infinity up to 2 okay so minimum value of x can have it as negative infinity maximum it can have it as 2 so it can't be beyond that so if you have any difficulties the same inequalities whatever i have represented that can also represent it on the number line so let's take this is the value of x as 2 and we take it as negative infinity and positive infinity so how do we represent the range of values the range of values for x is here x should be less than or equal to 2 meaning so x can have 2 or less so it will be opening in this way your option can also be have it as a representing on the number line rather than on interval notation so i should go with the option because if you see here what actually happening value of x uh, ranges from minus infinity 
up to two. The same thing we write it in terms of interval notation like this. So minus infinity up to two, but be careful. There are two such options in the similar way, B and C. X is less than or equal. For less than or equal, we should have a bracket, which is the square bracket, what we say. So we should go with option B. Don't go with C because when I'm saying this bracket for X means two is not a part of X. That is, that is the case for X is less than two not for x is less than or equal to, all right? So these are the possible type of questions what you can expect in MSAT exam based on the absolute values and inequalities. That's it for today. Hope you like the videos. Please do share and subscribe to my channel and also click on the bell icon. So whenever I upload a new videos, you will be notified first. As I mentioned, I'm in this series, I'm going to cover most important types of questions, how they can appear on the MSAT exam. So it will be very helpful for you to go through those before appearing for the test and also share with your friends so that those can also be get benefited of it. Thank you so much. See you soon.